Hi YouTube, this is John Muller again, and today I'll be showing you all how I built this AM or medium wave broadcast band DX loop to help with distance listening. I built it for two reasons. One, this loop improves the gain on my pocket AM receivers that you can see on the stool just behind this. And secondly, it helps with seal activity. Using a tuned loop, you can notch out interfering adjacent frequencies, which is great. Both those for distance listening where you have faint stations and many stations close together. You know that a strong local station like 700 WLW in Cincinnati, which is the sun. It's, it just overpowers everything where you want to get rid of that local signal and hear something more distant, like WOR on 710, for example. So anyway, that's why I built this. I'll go through the uh, construction. It's, it was just made out of stuff I had lying around the house. And this tuning capacitor that I remember, I think I, I salvaged from an old radio with my dad when I was um, uh, six or seven. But anyway, very, very simple components. All you need is a 365 picofarad tuning capacitor. I put a little knob to help adjust that. Some magnet wire or hookup wire. I think actually stranded wire is probably better in order to make the loop. And then different pieces of wood to hold the uh, wire and to support the loop and keep it from tipping over. There's a, I believe this is quarter inch by one inch by six pieces of wood that were glued horizontally at the base as stands and also to which I folded the tuning capacitor. And then for the main frame, it's an X. Each of these are yardstick length. You could you know, probably make something like this out of yardsticks. And the two pieces of wood, these two 36 inch uh, shafts that make an X shape are both one half inch by one half inch uh, square. In order to fit them together, I milled out a notch with a saw that about a quarter inch deep on each side, push these together and glue them. But before I did that, I needed to drill holes in order to hold the wire for the loop. Now, this is a spiral pattern that's actually really good for directionality. The inductance is highest from the beginning to including both the beginning and end of the loop, so you'll notice the strongest gain towards the center of the, of the loop, which helps a lot with, with directionality. Whereas it would all be, I imagine it would all be even if I just, you know, had wrapped, wrapped around a box or a uh, circular frame. So, so before I, I put the two pieces of wood together here, I needed to drill those holes for that, that spiral wire pattern. I did this by, by starting two inches from one end of the shaft and drilling 20 holes down space three quarters of an inch apart, which other people in, in uh, Facebook groups suggested was ideal for, for making the loop. After I drilled those holes, glued this together, I then wrapped the spiral very carefully from inside to outside, weaving it like a loom. And that was hard, but it was actually quite satisfying. It's a real zen <laughs> uh, experience uh, wrapping the wire through that coil. So it's, again, it's 20 loops total, then at the end, tied to the uh, what are those? The stator and the rotor of this 365 picofarad uh, capacitor. That's the construction. I also have a, a photograph showing plans, and I'll a include a link to that in the description, which will probably be more helpful than trying to follow up with all the stuff I said. But anyway, very, very simple construction, just magnet wire I have lying around the house, a tuning capacitor, I think, from a really old stereo console, Again, I remember, I think it was 6 or 7, 2000, 2001, scrounging that with my dad. Now, let's test this out. Let's get started listening with this CC pocket here. Now, you can see just the time, but I might try tuning to a station that I discovered was WHON Classic Hits, uh, Centerville, Indiana. So, from Richmond, Indiana, for reference, I am in Cincinnati right now, so it's about 50 miles a day, but it's 6.30 p.m., still daylight, so you'd expect, you know, 
have a 500 watt station, it's kind of hard to pick up uh, at that distance. Kind of weak signal scoop there. I'll set it on this table behind me. And you'll notice that it was really quiet before at, at lower frequencies, at higher capacitance. My cat likes it too, I hope she doesn't knock it over. Yeah, quiet again. And that's the notch. It's interesting since I, I would have expected in this orientation that it's an upper notch. You know, it, it quiets down just above the frequency that I tune the loop and the radio to, but it's actually uh, below it. So it seems to be more of a facing uh, orientation, but I'll have to open up the radios, or one of these radios, and see the ferrite loop, or ferrite rod and, and coil's orientation relative to this to think about how the notching would work. Anyway, I'll go back, and you can hear the signal getting stronger. And you can even see on the receiver the signal meter uh, jumping up as I tune it. Well, anyway, I'll, I'll tune that off, but anyway, that's, that's a daytime example. I'll also scan through nighttime frequencies and have a uh, nighttime DXing session with a loop, and you can see how it helps with um, directionality and gain and so on. I also tried this with uh, WONE Dayton. It's a sports station that's kind of weak in daytime, and this provides a lot of gain. I can adjust the distance between the receiver and the loop, and closer gives higher sensitivity and further gives higher selectivity. And you can also change the orientation of the internal ferrite uh, relative to the loop. But anyway, I, I used to hold the radio right up to the end, but based on some reading I did and a PDF I'll share in the description, I think it's best to keep this at a critical point where you get uh, good selectivity, still, still good gain, but reduce interference at, at adjacent frequencies. That's pretty much everything I have for the demo. I have one more thing I want to explain about this though. Some physics behind this that's you know a, a good uh, science lesson. And that's what this loop actually is as a circuit and, and the principles behind how that how it works. This is an LC circuit, a inductor capacitor circuit. This will absorb radio frequency, again, in, in the broadcast band AM spectrum, you know, 530 through 1710. And that leads to, to charging of the capacitor. Once the capacitor is fully charged, there's current that flows back through the inductor and magnetic fields that are generated. So either uh, magnetic fields that are converted into current and electricity by the inductor or the reverse, current that's passing from the discharging capacitor. And that's why this is called a tank circuit and it's really good for improving selectivity of the receiver because you can tune to a specific frequency and acting as a tank um, absorb the RF, say at 710 um, kilohertz, and from that enhance signal on the radio. There, and the way this works, since you know these aren't uh, connected, is there's is there's indirect coupling between the loop here and the inductor, the ferrite rod with a wire coil around inside this radio. The magnetic flux lines intersect and that leads to the magnetic field generated here interacting with the inductor there and thus strengthening the gain. So magnetic fields interacting is the principle behind how this works and what this is is an LC inductor capacitor circuit that will store electrical and magnetic energy at a given wavelength. 
Now with that said, I hope you enjoyed my uh, construction and uh, demonstration video of my AMDX loop. I really enjoyed this at night already. I can pick up a ton of clear channel stations. I've even picked up weaker stations from Biloxi, Madison, Wisconsin. I, well, Centerville, Indiana is, is, is pretty close. A lot from Birmingham, Alabama. I seem to get a lot of north-south directional propagation. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. And if you have any comments or suggestions, leave them in the box down below. Uh, thanks for watching.